Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're making a farmhouse cheddar blue. Now this one is my own recipe. Uh, I used a, a basic stir curd cheddar recipe which I added Penicillium Rogue 40 to, uh, and I've matured it uh, so far for about a week and a half, and I've had it out on the side, and instead of making it touch dry, I've basically um, let it firm up a bit, and then I'm gonna put it into a ripening box. Now, it's already got blue on it, as you can see. I've already pierced the holes, um, but anyway, let's get on and check out how we made this cheese. So we're using unhomogenized milk from Inglenook Dairies for this cheese. Now the ingredients are 10 litres or 10 quarts of whole cow's milk, an eighth of a teaspoon, which is a dash of mesophilic starter culture, one sixteenth, which is a pinch of Penicillium Roque 40 mould, I'm using a strong variety, half a teaspoon or 2.5 millilitres of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup, which is 67 millilitres of cool non-chlorinated water, half a teaspoon of liquid rennet, that's 2.5 millilitres. I'm using IMCU 200 strength, diluted in quarter of a cup of cool non-chlorinated water, and you'll need two tablespoons of non-iodized salt. As you can see there, there was a bit of cream that was solid, so I'm whisking that in. So I brought the target temperature up to 31 degrees Celsius, which is 88 degrees Fahrenheit. So remove all of your utensils from the pot. And we're going to add in the starter cultures in a second. So I'm adding in the mesophilic starter culture, just sprinkling that over the top. I'm using a Mad Millie mesophilic there. Any sort of mesophilic will do for this cheese. Uh, MA4000 by Choose It is also a good one, or by Sacco. Now, add in the Penicillium Roque 40 mold. I'm just sprinkling that over the top. Now, as I mentioned, you can also use Sacco MO30, which is a good equivalent in mesophilic starter culture as well. So we're going to allow that all to rehydrate now, and we're going to cover it all up, and it's going to rehydrate for five minutes. So five minutes later, take the lid off, and we're going to stir in the starter culture and the mould. I'm doing a top to bottom motion there, trying to get a maximum mixture through the cult, through the milk. So just before we let it rest, we're going to check the target temperature again. It's crept up a little bit, but that's no problem. It'll cool down during the uh, during the resting period or the acidify cut acidification period So because that is creeping up I'm gonna have to take that off of my um, My little steam pot there, but we'll do that uh, off camera So cover to make sure no dust gets into your milk and we're gonna let that uh, acidify for 40 minutes or ripen at 31 degrees Celsius or 88 Fahrenheit There we go, I'll remove it from the heat now, so it doesn't creep up any further. Okay, I've put it back onto the little steam pot there, but the heat's off. So now you can see a lot of cream has floated to the top there, so we're just going to stir that through. We're just incorporating the cream back into the milk again now. I'll just check the temperature before we proceed to the next step. And the good news is it's come down a little bit, so that's uh, 30.9, 31. 
close enough, which is 88 Fahrenheit. And it's now time to add in the calcium chloride. So slowly stirring there whilst we're adding in the calcium chloride solution. Now we'll give that a good stir through to make sure it's thoroughly mixed. Now we're ready to add the rennet solution and we stir while we're pouring that in and we're going to stir for no more than one minute. Give it a good mix through. Take out all utensils. I'm going to cover and allow the milk to set for 40 minutes at 31 Celsius or 88 Fahrenheit. Okay, so 40 minutes later, we'll check for a clean break. Now that looks pretty good. So it's nice and clean there as the knife moves through it. A oh, bit of a slips there. Um, if you don't have a clean break at this stage, wait another 10 minutes and then test again. So we're ready to cut the curds now. I'm going to cut it at 1.25 centimetres or half inch cube. So I did the horizontals with my curd harp and now I'm using my curd knife to do the verticals. So I'll do them one way and then I'll do them back the other way, perpendicular to the first cut or close enough to it. Just do your best and don't forget that during the stirring phase you can also cut any larger pieces that you may have missed. So we're going to allow the curds to heal now for five minutes. We're going to pop the lid on and let them sit there for five minutes. Okay, you can see a little bit of whey on the top of the curds have shrunk due to the cutting. Now we're going to gently stir those and move the curd just gently in this initial phase to ensure that they're all cut. And if you see any large pieces, just use the edge of the spoon and just cut those just like that. Perfect. Okay, now there may be quite a few large ones, depends on how accurate your cutting was but if you see them, just to cut them where necessary, as I'm trying to do there. So we're going to gently stir the curds now for 45 minutes. And at the same time, we're going to slowly bring the heat up to 39 degrees Celsius. You can see I'm turning the heat on there, which is 102 Fahrenheit. Now I'll check the temperature as we keep stirring. I don't hold it in there all the time. I just check about every 10 minutes. Now you can see we've got up to target temperature there now. 39 Celsius, perfect. And you can see that the uh, curd uh, cubes have shrunk dramatically. They're about the size of a pea uh, at this stage. Now we're going to let that rest. We let it settle all the way down to the bottom for 40 minutes if Siri will play the game. There we go. So 40 minutes later, now we're going to dip off some of the whey down to the level of the curds. So we're not going to be washing the curds, we're just going to take the whey off. So you can keep that and use that for a nice creamy ricotta or even turn it into a ricotta salada. It's Certainly enough solids in that milk to get well, probably about 250 grams or half a pound of ricotta from that whey. Okay, so we're close enough. Well, no, try a little bit more. We're down to the level. There we go. I can see them now. So we're going to stir now gently for 20 minutes. Although that doesn't look very gentle, but it is because I've sped up the footage. So stirring for 20 minutes. So this is the stirred curd part of the cheddar. There you go. Now it looks gentle, doesn't it? Okay, so 20 minutes later, this is what it looks like. You can see a fair bit of whey has been expelled out of the curds.
and you can see it's settling fairly quickly all by itself. Now I did a bit of a test there by just grabbing a, a handful of curds, squeezing them together and if they stay squeezed together then you know it's ready to go on to the next step. If not, stir it a little bit longer. So I'm going to allow them to settle for five minutes. This just allows uh, draining of the curds and whey to be a little bit easier. So then after five minutes we take it over to the sink area. I'm going to drain through a cheesecloth lined colander. Just pour the curds and whey and the whey will obviously drain through. Scrape out as much of the curds as you can. You don't want to waste any of the precious little beauties. There we go. So that hasn't drained very much at all, about two or three minutes. And I'm just bundling that up and you can see there's a bit of whey there, so I'm just manipulating it and just popping it into the pot again. And it's at this stage we're going to gently mill through those uh, two tablespoons of salt. There's one tablespoon and another tablespoon. Now you may want to add a little bit less. I would only go down to about one and a half tablespoons if you think the salt is on the the high side. But uh, definitely I've used um, it's about uh, yeah it's about two two tablespoons there. Now we're going to line our mould with cheesecloth and fill it with the curds. So I'm just filling by hand there. Obviously I've washed my hands and they're all nice and clean. So I'm making sure I'm breaking up any lumps there as well. And just get all your curds that have been salted all in. Perfect. So now that we've got all our curds in, just um, pull the cheesecloth down a little bit. Just It gets rid of any wrinkles, which will spoil the look of your um, the rind of the cheese. So once you think you've got them evenly distributed, just fold over the cheesecloth, put the follower on top, pop it in the press at about 10 kilograms, uh, which is 22 pounds for one hour. So that's about uh, halfway down on my spring. I've got a 50 pound spring there. There we go. So an hour later, we're going to remove it from the press. You can see the whey's running clear there now, so it's a good sign that I didn't press too hard in the first place. Okay, just pop the follower off, pull it out of the basket, and we're basically just going to flip the cheese over. There we go, just be gentle at this stage. Now we're going to press it again at 22 kilograms or 50 pounds for at least 12 hours. So fold over the cloth, put the follower on top. So for my 50 pound spring, obviously that's fully compressed and I'll know that that is the right pressure to apply to this cheese to fully close up the rind. There we go. Now just a quick spray. This is the uh, next day or late at night, I'm not sure. So just remove that from the press. Uh, we're going to air dry it for three to four days, which is a little bit longer than normal for a uh, stir curd cheddar. Normally it's uh, one to two days. Uh, but we're going to allow that to, um, to firm up the rind a little bit and also help it uh, develop the blue mold on top and bottom it probably won't form on the sides because that dries out a lot quicker than what the um, the top and bottom of the cheese does as you'll see in this next shot so I've had that just under cover and you can see blue mold has formed very nicely there this is after all a stir curd or farmhouse cheddar blue and I'm now piercing the uh, top of it with I'm just using the probe of my cheese thermometer which has been sanitized so I've just pierced that a bit through 
pushing most of the way through and hopefully any mechanical holes that are left behind uh, will now have blue mould growing in them. Now I'm going to put that in a ripening box. I don't think it should be waxed just yet or vacuum packed because the blue mould needs oxygen to develop. So I'm going to put that into the cheese fridge and ripen it between 10 to 15 Celsius which is 50 to 55 Fahrenheit at 80% relative humidity for three months. Turn weekly for evening ripening, even ripening. Now we may need to wax it after a month, depends on how it goes. So as you can see, that was a fairly simple process. We didn't have any of the cheddaring process. Really, we stirred it to get more of the whey out, which is kind of what a stir curd cheddar is all about. But with the addition of this blue, it's going to be, it's going to be quite an interesting cheese. Now normally with a stir curd cheddar you would wax this at this stage, it's now touch dry, you could wax it, put it in the cheese fridge for three months up to six months uh, and that's where you'll get the desired texture of a cheddar sort of cheese. However, I want the blue mould to grow into the cheese so I'm going to put it in a ripening box for the first month uh, and turn that uh, once weekly. Hopefully there's enough oxygen that I pierced, that the holes that I pierced, enough oxygen will get in and create some nice veining. Now, I don't always have the best luck with blue cheese, but hopefully, fingers crossed, this one will work out. If you want to find the kit to make this cheese, and then pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Also, don't forget that you can subscribe to the channel to uh, get interesting content on a weekly basis. If you want to support the channel, don't forget that you can do so via Patreon with a monthly pledge for as little as $1 US. Every little bit helps. Thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.